We have a collection of VHS tapes and home movies I've always wanted to digitise and share with friends and family. I decided to buy an old VHS player from eBay and found a highly rated digital converter on Amazon that would enable me to connect the VCR to my computer. In this video I explain how to set up the hardware and what software and settings to use to convert those VHS memories into modern digital formats. Viewers of a certain age may well have a box of old VHS tapes, just like my family. These tapes are invariably filled with old TV shows and movies recorded from your TV network, or home videos shot on old video cameras. The challenge with recovering content from VHS is that the format is now long defunct technology. Last video cassette recorders, or VCRs, stopped being manufactured in 2016. The VHS cassette contains magnetic tape wound onto two internal spindles. When inserted into a VCR, twin motors drive the tape across a magnetic head. This process converts the recorded magnetic information into video and audio signals for display on a TV or monitor. To transfer the content to modern formats requires some technical expertise and some equipment. To get started, you need a VCR to actually play back the VHS tapes. I bought an old VCR from eBay. Then, where you would normally connect the player to an old TV, with video and audio composite cables, you will use a converter instead and connect the VCR to your computer to receive the signal. I reviewed some options on Amazon and ended up purchasing the VIXLW VHS to digital converter. I've added a link to the description of this video. At only $17 on sale, it was a very inexpensive solution. Then the converter connects to your computer via the USB connection. Once you've connected your VCR to your computer, you will need the necessary software to see the incoming signal on your computer screen. The VIXLW recommends using either OBS Studio or Pop Player for PC, or QuickTime Player for Mac. Out of the three, I was keen to try something new. Pop Player is a popular free multimedia software player for Windows-based computers. To download Pop Player, open a browser and visit popplayer.daum.net and choose the correct version for your computer from the 32-bit for older computers or 64-bit for later hardware. The software will take a few minutes to download and install. Now you have the hardware and the software, the next step is to record your VHS content to your computer. The process involves playing your VHS tape on your VCR and using your computer as the monitor. You'll then record the video and the audio via pop player in real time. In other words, you have to let the VHS tape player play continuously and your computer will record the content. Today we expect access to our media content instantaneously. We're accustomed to the ability to stop, skip and jump around the visual and audio media with just a click of a mouse or a tap on a screen. Analog playback technology like VHS is linear and requires live playback from the start to the end of the media content without interruption. The data is not stored in discrete packets or blocks, rather the continuous analogue signal must be processed in real time as it's read from the physical medium. In contrast, digital data is stored as discrete packets allowing for non-linear access, quicker transfer and storage as a single, easily manageable file. To digitise the complete contents of a two-hour VHS tape using Pop Player, the tape must be played without interruption for the entire two-hour duration to capture the content. Next, you'll need to set up Pop Player where to detect the incoming signal from your VCR. Start by rewinding your VHS cassette and then pressing play. Next, access the Pop Player settings by clicking on Pop Player at the top left. Then choose Open and Open Webcam or Other Device. The converter is designated as a USB device for the purposes of Pop Player inputs. You should now see the VHS content in Pop Player. The next step is to access Pop Player settings again, then select video and then video recording and then record video. It will launch a dialog for you to make some changes to the capture settings. The first step is to designate where you want the digitized file to be saved. You can then also rename your file at the point of capture should you want by filling out the file name prefix. If you have a very long VHS cassette, you might want to think about splitting the files into smaller chunks either by minute or by file size. This is advisable if your computer doesn't have a particularly high specification. 
Next, the recommended default container setting for Capture is MKV. This is a wrapper for the codec, but you can change it to MP4 for more broad playability on different devices. For the purposes of exporting the best output, you can leave the next group of settings as default. Then, when you're ready to start recording, queue up the VHS cassette to the start of what you want to capture, press play, and now click start. If you've been following my series of videos on video quality and building your own private media library, you will have come across my deep dive look at Handbrake, a free, open source, multi-platform video transcoder used primarily to convert video files into modern, widely supported formats like MP4, MKV or WebM. To improve the quality of your digitized VHS conversions, process the video through Handbrake after digitization. First, I recommend watching my video about Handbrake and then returning to this video as it will give you an overview of the software so you're ready to apply the following configuration. On the Summary tab, make sure the format is set to MP4. You can then use MKV, but the file sizes will be bigger. Within Dimensions, set the resolution limit to 480 for NTSC and 576 for PAL. Then set the cropping to Automatic. Under Filters, set Deinterlace to On, and if you're noticing a lot of combing in the Pop Player output file, change the setting to Yadif. Otherwise, you can leave it on default. Leave Denoise to Off or Light. Denoising can blur details if applied too strongly, and you're already starting with a very low resolution. Under video, set the encoder to H.264, just for the most widely compatible format, depending on how far and wide you're intending to share the video. Keep the frame rate the same as the source, and then set the quality to constant quality and the RF value to 22. Set the encoder preset to medium or slow for the best quality and file size. Under Audio, make sure the codec is set to AAC for best universal compatibility for playback. If you want to take your VHS conversion and digitizing to the next level, there are a number of steps you can take to improve the quality of your output while converting. The first is something called Full Frame Time Based Corrector, or TBC. This can either be found in more expensive VCR players and switched on, or you can invest in a separate device that connects between your VCR and the capture device. In very simple terms, TBC stores frames of video before transferring them to the next stage of playback, ensuring the data is seamlessly received by the capture card. Without a TBC, sometimes capture cards can get a little bit confused by delays in information from the VCR and will drop frames in the final digital output. Dropping frames has the knock-on effect of desynchronizing the audio. For example, a person's lips might no longer be synchronized with their voice. Another hardware optimization you can make is to use an S-Video cable if your VCR is compatible. Instead of relying on the yellow composite video cable, S-Video better maintains the luminance and chrominance than the more basic yellow cable, improving sharpness and color accuracy. Finally, you might want to do some basic maintenance of your VCR player and your VHS cassettes. Ensure your VCR heads are clean. Also, tapes that haven't been played in a long time should be fast-forwarded and rewound once to loosen the reel pack, which can help reduce static, sticking and dropouts during capture. The original quality of your video and video source quality is the main limitation to the final digitized quality. VHS has an inherently low resolution and quality by modern standards. Handbrake can only preserve the existing quality and it can't add detail that isn't there. Deinterlacing is crucial, and the most important filter is deinterlacing, as it eliminates the combing artifacts that appear when interlaced videos like VHS is played on a progressive display, which includes modern TVs and monitors. Finally, avoid upscaling and stick with the native 480p or 476p resolution. Upscaling only inflates the file size, but not the quality. Thank you for watching and as always it would be great if you were to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home.